Hello. Today we're going to do Aerospace 102, a continuation of Aerospace 101, in which in this video we'll be doing uh, ground, uh, air to ground. And uh, if you didn't catch 101, I re recommend you do it because it has this, the space battles and the aerospace battles for, uh, I mean atmosphere battles for aerospace, which the movements in the battles different than the air to ground. Alright, so to save some time, I already built the two units, two armies. And I'm going to show, just in case you didn't see 101, I'm going to show you how to build a squadron. And this is where you right click, start a fire squadron, and you can name it whatever. So I'm going to name it. I'm not very original sometimes, so uh, lightning five. All right now, I right click on all the other fighters and say join. Now all these fighters, I've I put all uh, bombs on all of them, and then I'm gonna leave this one single and. You'll, you'll discover why in a minute. I've already selected the map and the game options. Of course, I always run with all the options on. So something that you want to take note of is the advanced atmospheric controls and uh, I mean the advanced movement, advanced astromatic uh, ast controls and um, the advanced anti-aircraft. With this anti-aircraft, you can your mechs can target the fighters easier and I'll explain that once we get into the, into the map. Alright, so here's the map. I'm just going to deploy the mechs out and open. I'm not here to win any battles, I just want to show you a couple of moves for the fighters. Alright, and there's my hammerhead. I'm going to move this over here to get out of the way of the map. And then here's my squadron. Now, I'm not going to move the mix. Alright. So, first, I start off my squad, my fighter. Alright, now, like space battle, you have to fly over the unit in order to bomb. You have to fly over the unit in order to attack. Alright. Unlike space in the atmosphere, when you hit acceleration, it's not just one hex, it's many hexes. So one acceleration button will put me to where I can move 16 hexes. Okay? That's not going to be enough to be able to fire because I haven't crossed him yet. I'm only on top of him. So I'm going to go next unit and then accelerate accelerate all right and then turn notice I can turn because of the green yellow means I can turn but it's going to cost me a roll red means I can't turn yet all right and the reason why I picked a 50 50 map as you can tell two acceleration buttons and you go a long ways I'm all the way way down here as I scroll out and show you if I was on a standard 16 by 17 map i have already thrown flown off the map and then I won't be able to use my gear my weapons so the minute you fly off the map whatever move you made during that turn it will not allow you to fire your weapons alright so I'm going to move now 
Sparger is the same way. It moves together and it moves at the slowest uh, plane. So that's why I picked the same uh, exact planes for the squadron. I mean, you can mix it up. You can have several different types of fighters if you want. I just typically like to keep with the same fighter within the fighter group. All right, and there's my move. All right, now we're in the firing stage. All right, I flew over him. So with bombing, just like uh, with space bombing, I got click click on the person. Now, I'm not really bombing the mech. I know it sounds strange, but I'm not bombing the mech. I'm bombing the hex. So I have to right click on the hex and tell it to bomb the hex. Then it will allow you to bomb. Now I'm going to dive bomb. The difference between dive bomb and altitude bomb, altitude bomb, you're staying at level whatever you're at, 5 at this case, and just dropping bombs. It's not as accurate. When you dive bomb and you're getting closer, you're pushing the bombs off. I, I believe it's more accurate. That's just my own personal opinion. Now I'm going to hit fire. And just like with all the others, the space bombing, this little dialogue comes up. I'm going to tell it to drop all 15 onto the mech. Alright, and then that. Now, with the squadron, it's a little bit different. Fortunately, you right, you click on it, you right click, you target, and you can see I can't bomb. So, with the squadron, you can't bomb. But, but if you come over here and look at the firing, you're going to fire all five AC-20s at this mech. So we'll see the, the difference between damages uh, in, the next, in the next page. But it will be significantly different. And you always got to be careful about the heat. It's all together. You don't want to overheat your, your planes because if you overheat, you crash. All right, so now I'm gonna, I am going to fire the mechs, and I want to show you. If you didn't have the anti-aircraft uh, option selected, I would have to fire at where this dude's at, which is impossible at the stake because I'm pointing this way. All right, but now with that option selected, I can fire at him because it's actually firing its weapons when it comes across. So, I'm able to fire at the ships without crossing over. So, it's a good, good option to have if you want to uh, level the playing field. Because before, you know, your ships can fly away, drop bombs, and if you had accelerate far, farther, farther enough away, uh, you would never get hit. All right, the hammerhead dropped his bombs, and he hits this vulture several, several times. Gets some critical hits on the on the center torso, 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 and the right arm, and the engine. So he did pretty good damage to the uh, vulture. Now with the missile or with the lasers in the AC-20, you see here, uh, medium, he misses, AC-20 is five, he all but ripped off most of his armor on his leg. Right, and then j -Fal Falcons fire and did some damage to uh, the ships and it looks like the hammerhead got a pretty good blunt he lost some altitude I've had where before the fighters have completely decimated because they hit the head and the shoulder 
and the uh, mech just went down. First round, down for the count. It was very nice. That's why I like to I like to do a combination of fighters and individual because I like to do you know a little bit of bombing, a lot of lasers, and uh, and that's how it works. So and that's it. That's all the oh the one other thing I want to talk about is we'll do one more movement. All right. So just like with the atmosphere, you have movements capability, maneuvers. And these are the type of maneuvers I can do. Now this the side slip would have been great if I had mech sitting right here, because then I could side slip and attack him. I, I want to try to hammer head back over, but I'm not pointing towards. I'm not pointing towards the mech anymore. So, and that's due to the damage, I believe. So I'm gonna do a split S, and that'll let me. Uh, that will let me select which way I want to go. And those rules are in the aerospace, air attack rules. So I'm going to accelerate once. Split S. And come back. And fly over him again. See, now I'm going to have to redo it because I don't want to fly off. I'm going to make sure that, make sure that. Because like I said before, if you fly off, then you cannot fire. So accelerate, maneuver, split us. Now I'm going to turn right now so it gives me more space to fly out the amount that I have to fly. Actually this is a good lesson for me because I do this all the time. Because I had moved accelerate twice with this dude, I still have one acceleration. And so when I was adding another acceleration to this move, that was, that was two accelerations, so I had to go further. I really don't want to go further, so I'm not going to accelerate. I'm just going to maneuver it. Split us. Because I already have one acceleration. And then go from there. See, some people will like to edit their videos until it's absolutely perfect. There's no mistakes in it. Well, I'm just not that type of guy. I don't care if people see my mistakes and laugh behind my back. I want to be real and uh, honest and so I don't care if I make mistakes it's part of being human alright so he has a 1-2 because I move maneuvers are just the same as with the squadron as it is with the with the uh, individual fighter I'm going to hammer head this one though so I'm right back 180 I can just fly straight over Which I won't get enough time. But I just want to show those maneuvers. And of course I think they both failed. So. Yeah. It is what it is. I wasn't trying to be perfect. This is just an example of not actual battle. So there you have it. Those are the movements of the ground. It's much more interesting when you have a bunch of mechs. And tanks. And coming in. I like to. When I'm doing this, I like to do the, the fighters as reserve and then bring them in as reinforcements to drop some bombs and missile them to heck after they've already got some damage done by my mechs and tanks. Um, maybe you'll get to see that if you watch my next episodes, which all I'm going to be focusing on the mech HQ. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start up a unit using the ATB rules and just follow along with that I'm going to start with a company of mercs that have to um, 
that are paid off, paid for by this new faction in town. What is this? I have built, I'm doing this campaign that involves all factions. So I have over 400 campaigns going on because when my faction that I associate with is attacking an enemy, I usually build their campaign. Therefore, I can keep track of their damage max. And when they get to a certain level, then they retreat off, off world. Or if I totally destroy them, then their unit's gone. They can never fight again. So it's attrition. And uh, what I'm doing is 3030. It's going to be taking place in 3030. And the third succession war never happened. And so this is like the third succession war, even though it's taken in the time frame of the original fourth succession war. And this faction has started up in between the Debian and the Kruita and then the Outworlds uh, Alliance. And I'm going to build this faction up and eventually hopefully take over the whole universe. We'll see. Because if I continue this, I'm back. I'm into the clan invasion time. I'm actually going to bring the clans in. And evade from up north just like they did in the fiction lore so i hope you enjoyed thank you for watching and uh i'll catch you later